Am I live? Am I live? Am I live? Uh, let me know. Because I haven't done this in a long ass time, so I don't know if it's actually fucking working. Sending it to this fucking stream. Yes, I am fucking live. Let me get out of here. All right, guys. So I haven't done a stream in a long ass fucking time. Like the last time I was doing my own stream, I was doing like let's play videos and shit that like one person would come and watch. Uh, and I think back then I had like something like a hundred subscribers. So maybe like I think at its peak it was like ten people watching me play Mega Man Two, which actually that was a really awesome fucking live stream. The only thing is that uh. You know, I got really fucking erect on it. I was like, I panicked. I was like, did I say something, like, regrettable on here? I don't know. And I deleted the whole fucking thing. So, you know, it's lost to, uh, history. But here we are now, doing a live stream. I got a list of shit I want to talk about. A list of grievances, I guess. Um, and here's the thing. Like, a lot of these things, I haven't been putting out as many videos because I would get these little topics that I want to talk about. But then I'm like, it's not really something I can stretch out to an entire video. I just got little tidbits for the list. So... Let's get into these fucking tidbits. And the first one I want to get into is these fucking rappers. Uh, let me pull up the picture here. N not just a single out Post Malone who just bothers me to look at his fucking face. Like, uh, obviously people say that shit about me too. So, you know, I'm one to be throwing fucking stones. But, uh, I don't know what it is. There's this wave of rappers. And I'm not going to pretend like I'm the biggest rap guy or whatever the fuck it is in the world. Like, I listen to some rap. I'm not one of those metal heads that's like, oh, you know, if it's if it's not metal, it's fucking crap. I'm not one of those elitist fuckheads. But, uh, you know, I'll listen to, like, fucking, like, Dr. Dre or fucking Biggie or something. Actually, strangely, last night I had a dream with fucking LL Cool J. And I know of all fucking people, he, um... I guess the dream, I was in some kind of virtual reality type game, and LL Cool J emerged as the final boss, wearing a gold suit of armor, and he had a, like, this weird, like, it was kind of like a bazooka that shot, like, a shotgun, and I took it from him, and I killed LL Cool J in the game, and I won by winning, I guess I woke up around that point, but, uh, regardless, I digress. What I want to talk about is, oh, hey, Kim. Kim's in here. Uh... What I want to talk about is these fucking rappers that, like, they all have, like, this same fucking flow. And there's a good video of YouTube imitating one of these kinds of flows where they're like, like, every rapper that comes out seems to fucking sound like that. But they also do this other thing that really bothers me even fucking more. The first person I heard do it was Pulse Malone. I'm sure there's other, I'm sure I've heard other guys do it. So, like, I'm not trying to single out just Pulse Malone, but I became aware of it. When, um, I saw him, like, collaborate with H3H3, and he does that fucking shit that I call the asthma rap, where they're just like, hun -hun 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 -hun. I forgot what fucking song is, but if I guess if there's any Post Malone fans there, you know the song, or the songs where he does the, hun -hun 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 -hun. and to me, it just bothers me, because it sounds like either a kid is having a fucking asthma attack, or, like, they're, you know that thing kids do when they cry, and then they start, <laughs> <laughs> and they try to talk like their mother hit them or something. They're like, they're like, Mom, please, don't hit me again. I'm so sorry. Like, that's what that kind of rap fucking sounds like to me. And I, I guess it's just me getting old at this point. I just don't get the fucking appeal of it. But it's fresh in my head now because I saw my friend Tim talking about that. And I was already thinking about that for the past couple of days. So it's like, you know what? Let me include that in the fucking stream. Uh, actually, let me check how many people are in here because I can't see that for my OBS setup. Oh, who is in here? Seven people already doing better than the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the Let's Play stream. So what other topics do I got in here? I got, oh, the Man Romper. The Man Romper. And yes, Phenom, thank you. Like, when I say these things, like, because I know, like I said, I'm not, like, the most educated person on rap or hip-hop or anything like that. I think to myself, maybe I just heard this once or twice and I'm blowing out to be bigger than it is, but no, it is a fucking thing. Seeing Snoop Dogg make fun of it makes me know that it's a thing, and then people like you fucking confirming with me. It's just, ugh, it's annoying as fuck, but like, I just sound like the old man on his fucking lawn, you know, the, oh, these kids with their music. Eh, get out of here. So the fucking man rompers. Oh man, that's been a big story today, huh guys? Everyone's like seeing this, and they're like, oh, oh the bro romper, whatever the fuck it is. 
And I have mixed feelings about the Man Romper. Because the way I'm seeing it be presented, it's one of those things that I've only ever seen people either ironically say they want to wear it, or complain about it. And when I see people complaining about it, I kind of... I feel like it's one of those things that people who, they tend to, like, not have an extremely critical eye towards the world. It's one of those safe topics that everyone can be like, oh, yeah, I hate this thing, and I can be a part of that. Like, examples of what I'm talking about, people who are always like, hey, how about reality TV? Oh, it's so stupid, right? It's like, you know, it's like, fucking how many fucking decades later since reality TV was be it began being a trend and people are still on that shit? Uh, actually, I don't, I don't like the Kardashians at all, as if, like, that was a totally insightful fucking thing to say. Uh, Bluetooth headsets. Remember when Bluetooth headset was the trendy thing to make fun of? Like, that's what I see with this thing. The glitter beards. Do you guys remember the fucking glitter beards? I think it was, like, last year, there were all these articles showing a bunch of dudes with glitter in their beards, and they're like, oh, this is the new trend that's gonna piss you off, and it... I don't think I've ever seen a single fucking person in the actual real world with a glitter beard. Just in those articles complaining about glitter beards. Uh, it's... You know, when I live, like, I'm in Brooklyn all the fucking time. I go to hipster bar. I fucking practically live in fucking hipster bars. I've never seen a fucking glitter beard before. Sorry, guys. But then, I don't know why the fuck you would even want a man romper. Because it's one of those things that, uh... To me, like, a romper... Unless, maybe there's other special kinds of rompers that I haven't seen, but for women, rompers, it's women's clothes, and it, no matter how good a girl's body is, it just makes her look like a dumpy fucking Canadian milk bag. You know, you know, it's like, it just, it cuts it off at the fucking middle, and it just looks like a poopy diaper, like, even like these dudes, I have in the picture with the man romper, they got like, the poopy diaper fucking shorts going on, and then, you know, it's just a big, like, uh, a fucking, a fucking tarp that you've pulled together in the fucking middle. That's what a romper looks like most of the time. I remember one time, I went out with this fucking girl, and she had an amazing body, amazing body, and I show up, and she's wearing one of these fucking things, and I'm like, I didn't say this, but I'm just thinking to myself, how could you, how could you fucking do this to me? It's a fucking disappointment. And yeah, Danny, um... Danny, who actually pointed out, now that I'm like drinking uh, coffee and thinking about him... He, uh, he was the one who pointed out, I think, when I did my stream with Al Girl a few months ago, that I drink a lot of fucking coffee and water while I'm doing this. I don't know if it's just that I normally live like that, or if it's a nervous tick, or whatever the hell, but it's a thing I do. And he reminded me of that, but what he also reminded me of, he says, hip-hop died when Kid and Play retired. I remember, like, there, I was in elementary school, and Kid and Play was fucking amazing, and... You know, all these schools, they had these dare programs where the cops would show up and they would show you all these drugs, you know, don't do marijuana, all that kind of stuff. And uh, there was this big thing at the end of fifth grade. We were going to go to a big concert with all the schools put on by dare. And a Kid in Play was going to headline it. And I forgot which one it was. I think it was Kid. I think Play showed up and he was all like out of character because he was supposed to be the goofy one. He came to tell us that they couldn't perform because I think, I think Kid was, like, away with fucking drugs. So there you go, Dare. Dare to smoke a lot of weed and get fucking trashed. Third base, Tribe Call Quest, Black Sheep, they are my lot at the time. Uh, they are my lot at the time. Is that, like, Danny, you're from uh, the UK, right? I think that's, like, uh, some kind of... My lot at the time, that uh, UK slang. I love UK slang, but I sound like such a fucking dork if I try to say it. What's the one fucking... Uh, I'll, it'll come to me fucking later. But yeah, also the coffee. Not right now, but when I used to do these streams, I was always either drinking fucking pure fucking liquor or fucking with the spiked coffee, which I gotta bring back. I just I would have did that today, but I have nothing at home right now, and I wanted to get the stream done, even though now it's 8 o'clock and I'm probably... Running up against Monday Night... Not Monday Night Raw. Fucking Smackdown. I don't know if anyone still watches Smackdown. I haven't been watching. But, uh... You know. I got another topic, actually, that relates to the wrestling thing. Uh, yeah, Kim doesn't... 
where the men's are operating. Actually, like, Kim, like, Kim has huge tits. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Tim. Go follow her channel. It's a good channel. Um, and um, I, I'm imagining, like, even if she wore the fucking, the romper, it would still probably find a way to, like, make her look like a fucking surfboard. It's just the most unflattering, second most unflattering piece of clothing next to those dresses that used to make women look fucking pregnant. You guys know what I'm talking about. Alright, now the next thing I wanted to get into, actually, not thinking about the rest- Oh, I got the Nation of Domination up there and shit. The reason why, and I don't know if I have any wrestling fans in the stream right now who will know this reference, but... I was going to make a satire video. Well, it's not even really satire video, because I genuinely don't remember this correctly. And I guess now I'm, just, I'm in the mood to call whatever I don't fucking remember correctly a Mandela Effect. But guys, the Nation of Domination's fucking theme song. I remembered it completely fucking incorrect. Not completely, but... Alright, I'm gonna play a little snippet of it. Or actually, you know what? Let me know if you guys in the chat even give a shit about wrestling at all. Because if no one gets this fucking reference, it's gonna be totally like... You guys are gonna go to fucking sleep. But basically, I remembered the song incorrectly, so I was going to make a whole fucking video about how, uh, you know, the changes to the Nation of Domination's theme, which gave rise to The Rock Dwayne Johnson. It's all a conspiracy to uh, undermine black excellence, uh, black excellence from the world. You know, erase it. It's a conspiracy by CERN. Oh yeah, Danny Dearest. Uh, the only one I ever owned that was flattering was the one that was... That was legit vintage. Really, Danny? Like, I don't think I've ever seen a uh, flattering romper, so I'll have to, uh, you know, uh, unless you post it somewhere, I'll have to, like, find out about this. Because I've ne maybe they used to make them flattering, and Extremist wants me to do with a fucking Paul Joseph Watson voice. Fuck. What's the fuck? How did I fucking forget the thing that Paul Joseph Watson always fucking says? I made a whole fucking bit make fun. Oh yeah. Well, imagine my shock. That sounded like more like fucking Vincent McMahon. Fucking Vincent Kennedy Watson. Imagine my shock. You know, it's funny. Actually, this reminds me of something that I was going to put in the description for this stream, but I didn't remember it, and I just fucking remembered it. They're making... And the reason, as stupid it is why I remember this from Paul Joseph wants leftist. It's a leftist conspiracy. So much for the tolerant left. Uh, uh, for some reason, I was looking up... I had an old video on here, The Hedgehog Hunter, where if you guys don't know about this, there's just... The, the Sonic the Hedgehog subculture on the internet is fucking insane. Like, it's just all these people who make hedgehogs based on themselves. So if you look up your name plus the hedgehog, you're gonna get some crazy shit. Like, you can look up Kim the Hedgehog, Danny the Hedgehog, uh... I was gonna say Danny and Danny, I realize Dan, you, we got Danny guy and Danny girl in here. You, but you guys can look up your name the hedgehog and you're gonna find some crazy fan-made hedgehogs. And I had a whole video of the Hedgehog Hunter that was exploring this. I was gonna tweet Paul the Hedgehog at Paul Joseph Watson. For some reason, I thought that was gonna be funny. But today, they announced a game where you can make your own fucking Sonic the Hedgehog fan character inside the fucking game. So I cannot fucking wait to see the next evolution of uh, your name the hedgehog. Danny says, Paul is from Manchester. They are all like that there. I mean, actually, what's fucking crazy is there's been this thing. I don't know if you guys follow Paul on Twitter, but uh, he is a big, big smoker. And there was like some kind of thing about, uh, I don't even remember what it was. It was something to do with oppression or smokers or whatever the fuck is smoking triggering people. And he's just, to, to upset them or something, he, he takes a profile picture of him smoking but then someone else pointed out, he's also said in the past that he doesn't like to leave his apartment. So, his apartment probably smells fucking terrible. Like, if you've ever been in a smoker's house, it fucking stinks. But then, a smoker's house who never ever goes outside if they can avoid it. Jesus fucking Christ. Now, what actually reminds me of something that I really did want to fucking get, get, ugh, something that I really did want to get to. I was actually thinking about making a whole fucking video about it, but I figured it might fit into this fucking stream. The clapping hand emoji. 
I feel like this the clapping the clapping hand emoji is something I've made fun of a few times on this channel, but now oh what's going on, Mr. Shadow? Uh now there's like a thing. I don't even know if it's like satire or not. I don't think it is, because it's on motherboard, which typically doesn't publish satire. But it's saying now that the clapping hand emoji, the thing you do where you but between every word you clap your hand that is apparently cultural appropriation now and what i love about that so fucking much it's like a now that people uh you know if you tell some people who are like super into like the social justice warrior world or whatever i hate using that term because it's such a loaded term but it's the best way i can describe it it seems like those are always the people who are like using that to put emphasis on mundane points you know stop teaching men to rape like those kinds of people but now you can say hey listen whitey you can't do that because that's a that's a black people thing you're not allowed to do that shit anymore it's crazy it's a it's a fucking emoji all right yeah kim's guilty of it but here's the you're allowed to do that because you're black so now like if you catch any white people clapping their hands for emphasis say it louder for the people in the back if you, you catch any <laughs> <laughs> you catch any of those people doing that, Kim. You gotta call it on. It's like, hey, stop erasing my culture. That's literally what it said on the article. You can look it up on Motherboard, I think. Uh, I, w I should have brought that as a, like a picture I can show up there. Uh, it's one of those... It's I think the headline of the article is something like how emojis are erasing black culture or how Twitter is erasing black culture with emojis. Like That's the name of the fucking article. It's clearly one of those things that's built, like, an author, a journalist, which I've spoken about many, many fucking times on this channel, they need to keep that ad revenue coming in, so they need to look for something to be outraged about. And that was the thing today, clapping hand emojis. And I'm really sorry if that clapping hand, like, blew your fucking ears out. Uh, Danny, I just use periods... Oh, it's like the people that end every sentence with okay to emphasize they're talking about. Okay, I feel like the okay thing, that might be some kind of a uh, tick that, um, like, I had, I realized, especially since I started doing this channel, I have, like, a lot of, uh, speech patterns that you don't even realize until you start doing something like, like that. I always do the like as an um... Uh, here's the thing. I picked up the here's the thing from Triple H. I definitely, because he says here's the thing all the fucking time. Uh, here's the thing, what's the, oh, I mean, I mean, there's actually classes that will untrain that, but it's not something I want to invest in at this point. And yeah, Kim, like, here's the thing, Kim, like, Kim is saying that, no, like, I don't care if J.K. Rowling or somebody uses that. And I guarantee you, the author of that article was some white lady who was being offended on behalf of you and I, that's one another thing that i can't fucking stand which i'm gonna get to a little later with the chris pratt thing and that goes out into even like a bigger thing for something i saw on twitter that i didn't really respond to because i had to sit on it and think about it for a little bit uh phenom when am i gonna wear one of those masks for the video i actually did it my april fool's day one when i was uh doing my parody of those weird uh spider-man frozen elsa things I put on my El Generico mask and was running around with a fake pregnant belly. Um, but yeah, anyway, going back to the, uh, the people being outraged on behalf of other people. Um, the Chris Pratt deaf apology. I did make a video about that earlier in this week. Uh, if case you missed it, basically, there was a video Chris Pratt made on Instagram where he started off by saying, turn the volume up, and supposedly... Deaf people were offended by this. I've still yet to see a deaf person actually say they were offended by it. A lot of them who did comment on it saying, like, listen, like, we're used to, like, not being able to enjoy things the way that, uh, people who are able to hear enjoy. It's just a part of life, which if you live every day like that, I would assume, like, you're not going around getting offended by people speaking around you, um, turning the volume up, things like that, but... He was pressured into doing one of those, oh, I'm so sorry, like, a fake celebrity apologies. But the follow-up that I want to get to on that was, um, I saw one person responded to me on Twitter. It was, it was weird. It was, like, some kind of nested response that I don't really know if it was directly at me or whatever, but they were talking about how, uh, the people 
who are outraged by the apology are contributing to outrage culture just as much as the people who are outraged over the, um, the turn the volume up thing. You know, the people who, once again, were most likely offended, who aren't deaf, but were offended on behalf of deaf people. Or, let me not even say were offended by, they chose to write an article feigning offense in order to generate clickbait money. Uh, and what bothers me about that so much is that it's it's a kind of childish reasoning, a false equivalency, and you see it all the fucking time, where it's like, oh, well, if you really didn't care, you wouldn't have said anything. If you... you you're just as outraged by complaining about it. It's like, no, because you're purposely messing with the definition of what outrage is. If people are on Twitter roasting Chris Pat Pratt for just being a fucking phony in that moment, that's not outrage. That's fucking shitting on somebody for fucking transparent behavior. But, you know, if you call it outrage, then it's like, oh, it gives you leverage to make that false equivalency. It's total fucking bullshit, and... Something I want to see, I want to mention that I see in the chat right now. Tyler Flannery. I just saw a Tumblr post claiming the uh, is for lesbians. I haven't seen that, but if you can clarify that, like where they got that from, because that's really interesting to me. That's actually one that I use for, I see used in context all different kinds of ways. You know, someone slides into the DMs, but you don't know if they're what their angle is, so you just kind of like. You know, let them keep talking until you know what it is. That I don't understand how this is for lesbians. Um. Oh my god, yeah, the Spider-Man Elsa videos. Oh, alright, so the other topic I have here... Arc Symphony. Arc Symphony is another one that it's... This is something that it's... You ever have an idea... You never get around to doing it, and then someone else does it probably better than you ever would have, and it just it pisses you off a little bit, but you can't help but be like, yes, they fucking did it. And that's what Arc Symphony is. Like, this game, alright, so you know I have a lot of videos about the Mandela effect, all these people who are misremembering things and saying that, uh, oh, the CERN changed the dimension, and now this thing I remember isn't here. Well, they fucked people with this Arc Symphony thing. It's... What Arc Symphony is, like, it has the aesthetic of those late 90s uh, PlayStation RPGs. Final Fantasy VII, Final Fa I think all the Final Fantasy games have a look like this. Um, fucking YouTube streaming. Oh, I don't know if, like, the stream was messed up or something. But, um... They did such a good job of capturing the aesthetic of those games that people started coming out and being like, Oh yeah, I remember this game, Arc Symphony. Do you? Do you? It's a totally fake fucking game. They did such a good job of capturing that aesthetic, though. Like, the font choices, the name. Because you, here's the th way these Mandela effects work a lot of the time. Like, you, you kind of remember something a little bit, but it's not an important memory to you, so there's room for it to get fuzzed up a little bit. So you have something like Arc Symphony, and there were RPGs back in that era that had the, with the word Arc in it. There was, um, the first one that comes in is Arc the Lad, and then there's Symphony. There are a few games that had either the word Symphony in it or just general music references. That was a bit of a trend towards the end of the PlayStation RPG era. Even, like, early on for PlayStation 2. Oh, shit, I don't know if... Yeah, it's happening with the stream here. Let me check out that stream health. I'm gonna... I'm actually going to exit the screen for that just in case that's contributing to the shittiness of the stream. But anyway, you have all these people just now, they've basically been tricked into thinking, this. oh, this is another Mandela effect thing. I remember it so clearly, this game. That's just how susceptible the memory is to these fucking things. And this wound up being a promotional stunt for an online game. Like, and it was actually really cool. They made a fake uh, fan site that looks like one of those old video game GeoCities websites, down to, like, those little... um. If you remember back in the day on the, on the internet, you would go to a fan site for something and then they would have like a little network with these tiny banners. They made like a whole little network of fake fan sites for Arc Symphony and it was really fucking cool. Oh, Danny was doing a live show and the YouTube Hangouts was being a tit. Alright, I guess, I know like YouTube streaming it still isn't 
100% perfected. I'm only trying to push it a little bit more. Hopefully it gets worked out. I enjoy doing this stream right now. Um, I've actually been thinking about doing some Twitch streaming too for, obviously, like, I kind of moved away from gaming on this channel, but I would like to do more of that on Twitch, so, um, that actually, this, me doing this actually came from me just kind of craving that, uh, that immediacy of a live stream right now, and I see that Instagram started implementing that too, I might actually start doing some, uh, live streaming when I go out on Instagram, it, um, I actually kind of like how disposable the Instagram live streaming is, because even though I can kind of delete this when it's over with or whatever the hell, I feel like a YouTube stream is at least one like this. It's meant to be saved because it's kind of like just a bunch of small videos. It's like a podcast, pretty much. Like, what I'm doing right now is kind of the vision I had for the extended Wang episodes, where we could just jump from one topic to another, and I think it's better streaming. Maybe in a future episodes, I'll, um, I'll do like a hangout. I'll bring some more people on here to bounce some ideas off. I actually, another thing I maybe want to do that, I've just been, like, streaming so much, not streaming, uh, marathoning fucking old-ass episodes of Opie and Anthony with Patrice O'Neill fucking appearances on it. It's just hours and hours of fucking radio you can just leave on in the fucking background. It's, you know, that's, like, the vibe I'm having right now. Not so much a fully produced video. But the thing about Instagram streaming, it's, it feels so much more in the moment. Like, it's... It's there, and then it's fucking gone. You can't backtrack. You just pop in, like, see what someone's up to, leave. I feel like that is... It's almost more suited to the, um... The concept of Snapchat, where everything is just... It's there, and then it's not. But I don't know. If you want to follow that, obviously, I got all my social media up there. Uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, that's actually one of the funny things for my channel. I never, like, push my social medias. I'm never, like, one of those guys that's, like, subscribe. And, like, I think, I know the research shows that you want to tell people to subscribe. But it always seems so, like, inauthentic. And, uh, like, this YouTube, to me, it's something other than TV. So when you try to make it TV, it kind of kills what it is, if that makes any sense. Danny, I always make sure my guests have Ethernet as Wi-Fi. Shit, oh yeah, you don't, definitely, like, if anything is important, you definitely don't want to be running that off of Wi-Fi. Although, obviously, uh, if I start doing those Instagram streams, I'm going to be out on my phone. I actually, I probably, like, when I'm on the road, I'll probably do some streams from, uh, my phone on YouTube. Hopefully, it doesn't compress the ever-living fuck out of them, but, uh, we'll see. And, uh, let me see, did I have any other topics that I missed on this stream right now? Uh, I think I hit them all, so, hey... If you got you guys got any questions or anything, otherwise, I'm gonna be out of here. Let me let me check in and see who's here. Danny, uh, got the extremist. Kim, you still here? Actually, hey, Mr. Shadow, celebrities aren't real people. I heard. It, dude, that's like actually like a really um a funny thing to me that uh. People have this idea of a celebrity, not even necessarily celebrities, just anyone who has had, like, any kind of exposure. They think, like, you've been on TV once, or, like, you've been on tour, and you're, like, rich and famous or something. It's crazy. And, you know, like, actually, like, what I do for work, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not going to drop any fucking names or anything, but I'm around famous people a decent amount of the time. Not Sometimes interacting with them, usually not, but it's kind of crazy. Like, you see them, like... People put them on such a pedestal and you look at them and they're fucking sitting there like, you know, trying to grab a cup of coffee, fucking dicking around on their phone all fucking day just like we do. It's They're just these people who are celebrities. They're just people like us who are in a different field than we are. Oh my god, Trump and the FBI. Uh, the FBI. Uh, I don't even want to get too much in that. I don't have all the info. We don't really have all the info, but uh... If what they're saying is true, I think that's, like, technically, like, treason, isn't it? Like, I don't, I don't want to, like I said, I don't have all the information on the Trump and the FBI thing, but this is, I don't think anybody thought we would get to this point. But like I said, you, I'm not one of these people to yell fake news at anything that's the mainstream media. Clearly not. If you've seen my history of videos, I'm definitely not one of those people to dismiss it outright. But you can kind of see, especially, like, it was Washington Post coming out. We got the exclusive. We got the exclusive. Look at us. Look at us. Look at us. That 
to me, it's one of the downfalls of modern journalism. And I get it because as a YouTuber, you want to have your content out before anybody else because it's, you're just going to get more eyes on it that way. So the way Washington Post came out with like, here, here, we got the exclusive, we got the scoop, it always makes it not necessarily suspect, but it makes it more susceptible to jumping the gun and not having it all. So we'll see how this unfolds the next few days. I, I know Trump denied it, but of course he would deny it because who in that situation would realistically come out and be like, yeah, yeah, fuck, I did it. Yeah, fuck me, right? That's, it's never going to happen. Um, are Nick Beards the new nerds? Oh, I, I think I get what you're asking, and I, I agree, like, we had, back in the day, like, when I was growing up, we had the, uh, the stereotypical TV nerd with the pocket protector, and he gets stuffed into lockers, but now that whole aesthetic, it's a cool guy thing, you know, well, you're so, oh, I'm such a geek, I play video games all day, uh, yeah, have you guys ever heard of Zelda, have you guys ever heard of Star Wars, a little thing called Star Wars, uh, but then you still have this tier of people who are just, like, you know, seen as, like, legitimately socially unacceptable on some level. And those are the neckbeards, and those are, you know, I've heard, like, Tumblr feminists, like, call, like, the, uh, the female version of that, the legbeards, but, yeah, it's definitely, um, people are always in a hurry not in a hurry, but people are always trying to find out a way where socially they can make themselves better than other people, and some people are better than that than others, so there'll always be uh, an underclass of people socially, whether it be the nerds we had in the 80s and the 90s, uh, now we got neckbeards, um, maybe, maybe it'll be trendy to be a neckbeard at some point. Yeah, I'm a, Danny seems like the kind of guy that has like a legit fucking beard. I wish... I, could, I, I realized that, like, I got, like, the good mustache genetics, but this shit, this shit is, I have, like, a little bit that grows in because I'm lazy, and I got nothing up here. I got more than the average Asian dude, but, uh, I'm not fully Asian, so that's how it happens. Comic, yeah, it's funny how, like, the neckbeard aesthetic kind of came out of the Simpson comic book guy. Like, I've... You just see, like, so many of that dude. And it's funny because I think for a lot of people, like, I'm the kind of person, I feel like I should be a neckbeard, but I enjoy working out too much. Like, the way I live, the kind of interests I have, I am, like, this much removed from a fucking neckbeard. <laughs> but, um, you go out into the world, like, I've been, you go to, like, I remember I went to a Smash Brothers tournament, and... It was full of fucking neckbeards, and then I got, like, fucking destroyed by this kid who, like, he just, like, seemed like an average guy. Like, they're out there, man. The neckbeards, uh, they're, oh my god, there is this one dude who, I used to work at a music studio, and he showed up with the, like, this laptop of Fruity Loops, and he, you know what the thing about neckbeards is, like, stereotypical neckbeard, like, when you meet them in person, their whole thing is... They want to prove to everybody how much they know about everything. Like, that is... If there's one thing that you can kind of define into, like, a stereotypical neckbeard personality, that that's what it is. And I think that's one of the things that agitates people about them. Like, it, it, you, you've seen that meme where so you'll have, like, a girl that's like, Oh, I like video games. All right, name five. The name five meme... Those are the name five people. That's where that shit comes from. Because if you know something about something, they they need to prove to you how much you know. And actually, I kind of see that kind of purity test going back to the clap hand emojis. You see these people who are interested in social justice and things like that. I'm seeing so many of these little stories now. Like, like how I said, how it's mostly like... It's people who are in the jo the social justice side of things that are mostly using those clap hand emojis. But now you have other people within their field who they want to prove that they're better than those. They're above those people. They're like the name f name five social justices. They're doing that to each other now. It's like fucking elitist metalheads. Like that's what I see happening to feminists and social activists. They're turning into fucking metalheads with uh. You know, it's if it's not true cult black metal. Oh, you listen to Limp Biscuit? What? Sorry, you're a fucking poser. Like that's use the clap hand emoji. Sorry, you're a fucking poser. 
That's what's happening to these things. Because there might be some people at the top who, like, legitimately, like, they spend their time researching and studying these things. But for a large swath of the population, a lot of these social movements are just that. Like, they're a social thing. I want to be a part of this group. I want to be accepted by somebody that's all it is, if we're being perfectly fucking honest with themselves. I'm not saying that I'm not a person who does these kinds of things either. If I really, like, uh, st- took a step back and analyzed my life, I'm sure I'll find things that are interests of mine that I'm kind of just, like, a minute for the social aspect of it. I mean, people do that shit with fucking church and shit like that, too. So many people are just, like, religious for social reasons. Oh, Mr. Shadow... Uh, a, a few people asking me about my facial hair if I'm going to shave. Uh, you know, like, I actually, at some point, I'm, like, I'm the kind of guy where it's like, I feel like you want to, like, reinvent your look at a certain point. The mustache, I only had it for, like, a couple years. Like, everyone who's known me for most of my life, this is, like, what the fuck are you doing? But now you guys who know me from the YouTube channel, because I've only started this, like, pretty much about a year ago, in last May... I've always had the mustache, as far as you guys know, but, um, I recently shaved this clean. I wasn't too happy with that. I like to have a little bit going on. Uh, I just, I felt like I looked a little bit too sleazy with just the mustache. And... I've, like, as for the head hair, though, and actually, there was something, um, because, like, I work sometimes as a background actor sometimes i go to auditions they do ask if you're willing to shave and the past few times that's been presented to me i opted to say i don't want to shave and i've actually gotten a lot of jobs because of the mustache so you know it's probably financially in my best interest to keep it because oh i live in fucking new york so they're shooting stuff with like they want hipsters all the fucking time or specifically guy with a mustache so that, that gives me a decent amount of work uh, the head hair, though, like, it's one of those things. I've, I've had long hair for uh, five, six years now. No, definitely more at this point. It's been a long-ass time. But I'm kind of... I've been bored of the long hair, but I don't know what to do to it. I don't know if I want to do an undercut. My hair is the type where it grows straight out like fucking needles. So, you know, an undercut might be a really bad decision for me. But I want to do something. I don't know if I want to color it. I had a uh, fucking blonde streaks for a while. It's a little too much for me at this point. But I don't know. I'll get that figured out. Anyway, I think this is a good point to cut off the stream. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'll be sure to do more of these. Oh, God. Phenom says, let us do some of that acting. Here's the thing. All right, I was about to leave, but now I'm not going to leave. Uh, I, I basically, like, I'm not... I've been, I had some training, but I'm not what I would call actually an actor. I... I went away on tour with my old band a few years ago, and I came back, the place I was working at went out of business, and I saw some listings to be an extra on Gotham, so I was like, alright, let me do that. And then uh, I started doing that, and I've realized I can do that like, long term as just a way to make money that's flexible, and it, it's worked out pretty well, but now you, the more you get into it, the more you're like, oh, well, I can like go to this audition. So I, I can't, I fucking suck at acting. I, I could do a bit part. All right, but uh, it, there's even been times now. I did go to like a, a few courses. I had like a sit down with a guy who like he's kind of like he does what in acting that I would like to do, where you just do like a bit part here and there. You know, cause he's a character type. I'm what you would call a character type. I'm not. I don't look like a fucking Chris Pratt or something like that. I look like you know. Oh, we need an Asian criminal for a Daredevil or some shit like that. that like that's what my look is, which doesn't necessarily need. You don't need to be fucking Sir Patrick Stewart, as Mr. Shadow said. Uh, you don't need Sir Patrick Stewart to do a job like that. And I'm equipped to do something like that, but uh, we'll see. I actually, I did an audition for High Fidelity a few weeks ago, and I fucking, ooh, I sucked. I sucked. Oh, man. <laughs> Extremist. Do you get early 2000s nostalgia? Yes. I feel like... That whole, like, Vaporwave aesthetic. I fucking love Vaporwave, both for the the look of it and for, um... Like, I, I just like how the music sounds. But then the whole imagery of it, even though the sounds of it, it's, t- it's more of, like, an 80s, 90s kind of thing. Mo- a lot of the artwork, it's early 2000s internet nostalgia. I get so much internet nostalgia now, especially, um... 
like looking at some of these things. Like there's, uh, if any of you guys listen to Vaporwave, Macintosh Plus uh, Floral Shop is probably like the most classic album of that genre. And they have this screen on the cover that looks like something out of like a Sega Saturn FPS. I mean, uh, FMV. And that shit is, uh, it gives me so much nostalgia. But then there's also like the early ass internet memes that pop up from time to time. Like you, not so much all your base, but um, a few weeks ago, if you guys remember, uh, whatchamacallit, albinoblacksheep.com. They had a bunch of like funny internet videos way before YouTube was a thing. I just remembered Milk and Cereal, if you remember. There was, like, these two... There was a song, Milk and Cereal, Milk and Cereal, Cereal and Milk. And a bunch of people imitated these two guys, like, singing that. And that was, like, one of the first internet um, fads like that. Like, kind of like how everyone was doing Harlem Shake videos. People were doing Milk and Cereal videos, like, 15 years ago. And then there is that old internet nostalgia, like that, that Arc Symphony thing I was talking about. Those websites, it was like a... I guess those GeoCity sites, those fan sites, they were more of a, a late 90s thing. I fucking wish GeoCities was still around. There would be so many bands now if GeoCities was around that would have uh, GeoCities fucking websites, ironically. I fucking wish I could have that now. They actually, um, for the Arc Symphony, uh, the fake network of fan pages, they they made it Neo Cities. Oh, you know what? The font I have on here is so small to me right now. I thought Mr. Shadow said, I remember the 90s, though I wasn't born with him. I was like, damn, how, I have kids that young watching me? No, Mr. Shadow, I remember the 50s. It's funny that people, like, do things like that, though. There's, like, this kind of way that, uh... People have nostalgia for times they weren't around in a lot because they kind of, they don't take the whole image. They just kind of fetishize an aspect of it. Like, that happened so much with Mad Men. Everyone's like, yeah, I want to be Don Draper, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, like, especially, like, women were into that. It's like, no, you. Don't, I don't think women want the 50s to come back unless, you know, you like getting smacked because uh, you didn't make a sandwich. I'm pretty sure you do not want the 50s. Oh, remember when men were men? Remember how quickly DVDs came and went? You know what? It's, I'm an asshole. I thought, like, you know what? Blu-rays... Uh, actually, no. You know what? Because I feel like the time of Blu-ray didn't come... It didn't last as long as it would have had streaming uh, not become so prevalent. I mean, obviously, like, Blu-ray is still, like, the standard if you go out and buy a movies, but less and less people are buying movies now. And I think you can even get better quality if you download a movie than if you get a Blu-ray. I don't know. DVDs, though, it's it's funny, too. Like, if you look at a DVD now, if and you're used to either, like, streaming high-definition video or, or watching Blu-rays, they, DVDs look so bad now. Like, at least, like, VHS, it had this way of, like, coloring the tone of the image. But DVD just looks, it looks sterile and bad now. It sucks. Anyway, guys, I think I am going to make my break now. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I'm sure I'm going to do more of these. Uh, until next time, everybody get fucked.